Hello everybody. In this video, I want to show you some of the core functionality of Excel so that you can upgrade it from a simple database storage mechanism into a really powerful calculator. Now, I want to show you five basic features, how to use it as a calculator, how to use references, how to repeat equations indefinitely, how to use some of the built-in functions that Excel has secretly stored inside of it, and what it means to anchor references so that you can make your equations more flexible. Now, at its core, Excel is just a database storage vehicle. If I type 2 plus 3, Excel says that's not an equation, that's just letters. It thinks that it's literally just symbols, 2 plus sign 3. But if I type an equal sign in front, Excel says, ah, everything that comes after this is now a function. 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 to the power of 3 is, whoops, wrong one. 2 to the power of 3 is Eight. Okay, simple enough. The second thing I want to do is references. So let's say I want to multiply the contents of A2 and A3 together. What I can do is I can say five times six and it will just treat it like a calculator. But what I can also do is I can say equals this box times this box. Now it'll give me the same number, but this top one here is what's called hard coded. I had to physically type in those quantities and this bottom one is soft coded. What this allows me to do is if any of these numbers change, let's say I decide this isn't five anymore, now it's 10, my soft-coded one changes because its contents change, but my hard-coded one, I would have to go back and manually correct that one if I wanted a new result. I can also pull references from other sheets. So let's say I have multiple sheets, which I do down here. I'm in a sheet right now called Basics. Let's flip over to this other sheet called Applesauce. Applesauce only has one bit of data. There are 244 applesauce. It lives in box A1. So if I come back to my basic sheet and I type A1, it will say the information that lives in box A1 is the word calculator. Well, that's not useful. I want to pull it from the applesauce sheet. So what I need to do instead is say equals applesauce exclamation point. And that exclamation point, which we call a bang, tells Excel applesauce is a sheet and now I want the data that lives in box A1. And there's my 244. I can also use that reference as part of an equation. I might say, I wanna take applesauce A1 and I wanna multiply it by two. And there's my 200, uh, 488. So I can reference things that live within one sheet or I can reference things from other sheets if I have lots and lots of information that I'm trying to drag together. A third thing we wanna look at is how to repeat an equation. We wanna live by the philosophy, do it one time write one equation and then duplicate it infinitely many times. So let's say I want to multiply together the, the data that lives in column A with the data that lives in column B. So I can say A2 times B2, and it will give me the result. And then I can repeat it, A3 times B3, and there's my result. I don't wanna to have to do this again and again and again though. And it's the same basic calculation. So what I can do instead is instead of manually typing it, I can say, you know what, Excel's pretty smart. It knows that if the con contents of A2 and B2 are being multiplied together to go into C2, if I grab this little green square in my calculation box and drag down, it repeats that formulation in its entirety. And it says, now A2 and B2 scoop down into A3 and B3, and it plops the result into C3. And I can just keep doing this over and over and over again. Here, you'll notice it came up with zero, it's because there is nothing in A5, so it says nothing times 488 is zero. So let me put a bit of data in there, and now I have a number. This allows for maximum flexibility because it does multiple things. I can change any of these numbers and it will auto update all of my reference calculations. And it also means that if I ever have new data that comes into existence, I can come back and I can drag this calculation down and it will repeat the calculation that I have already built and I never have to think about it again. The fourth thing we want to look at is the built-in functions that are hiding in Excel. Excel is just as powerful as a TI calculator, and even more so, and it's more user-friendly because the interface is cleaner and simpler to use. The built-in functions are things like averages and, and standard deviations, mins, maxes, logarithms, anything I can do in a calculator. So all I need to do is type my equal sign and then start typing letters. So if I type A, Excel says, here's a list of all the functions I have that start with A. Well, I have one down here called average. So I'm gonna go ahead and type out average. 
And Excel tells me what an average function does. It returns the average, the arithmetic mean of its arguments. Well, all I need to do is say 1, 3, 7, 45, and it will average all those numbers together. The average of those four values is 14. Well, more useful than that is to say I want the average of, say, all of these cells that live in A2, B2, and C2. There's the average of all of my three bits of data. If I grab this little green square and drag down now, it repeats it, but it takes the average of A3 through C3. There are lots and lots of built-in functions, way more than I could possibly get into. But I can use things like a sum function, sum, open, open bracket, select my data and close bracket. I can have a minimum function. Minimum finds the smallest number in a set and returns it for you. So the smallest number of 9, 488, and 4,392 is obviously 9. I can also use logarithms like log base 10. And choose the log base 10 of 2,162 comes out to 3.3 and maybe I don't want all those digits I have these little scooters up here that can scoot my digits down so that I have the number of decimals that I'd like the last thing I want to look at is what's called anchoring to give my equations more flexibility let's say I have some kind of a master master value here a master value and let's give it a quantity 25.4 this box I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight it so that it's extra visible here this box is something I want to use over and over and over again. So let's say I have all these numbers in column A, and I want to do the same thing to each one. I want to divide each one of them by this master value, like it was a, a molar mass or a density or something of that sort. So I can come to my, my column here and say, I want the contents of A2, and I want to divide it by the contents of C8. Well, that will give me the proper result, but then what happens is if I want to repeat this calculation and I drag down, I get a divide by zero error. That didn't work. Why not? A2 divided by C8 was right, but then as I drag down, it says A3 divided by C9. C9 doesn't have anything in it, so that's why I got a divide by zero error. I want my calculation to always reference the data that lives in C8. So let's come back to my original formulation and say, I want to lock C and I want to lock 8. This little dollar sign tells Excel when you drag a calculation, don't drag away from the C column and don't drag away from the eight row. That means I will always, always look at this box of data for that particular number. Now, when I drag down, what you'll notice is that my A2 updates to A3, but my C8 stays fixed. That way I can drag down and repetitiously calculate over and over and over again. Maybe this is a bit of data that's specific to a, a reaction I just did. And this number was say the temperature for the day. Well, tomorrow the temperature is a different number and I can change it. And now all of my numbers change with it because they are all anchored. They're, they're all referenced inside my original formulation. Okay, so you guys learned Excel has every single little box is a, secretly a calculator that you can write references that point to particular cells rather than hard coding all of your data. That you can repeat equations by grabbing that little green square and dragging down or dragging sideways that I have built-in functions like averages, standard deviations, mins, maxes, sums, and that I can anchor by using that dollar sign to point to a particular box that I don't ever want to move. I hope you guys found some use out of this, and I hope you can start excelling with maximum power.